This beautiful decanter bottle is a recreation of a historic bottle produced in 1945. This is the James E. Pepper Decanter Barrel Proof Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Not only is this a beautiful bottle, but the price is kind of beautiful too. A bottle that's been making some noise lately. Let's try it. Talk a bit of history. It's the Mash and Drum. What's up folks, I'm Jason C and welcome back to the Mash and Drum. Like, subscribe and help me hit 100,000 subs in 2024. Thanks again for all the support. Now before we dive into a little bit of history about James E. Pepper, let's hear from today's sponsor, your chance to try the game changer. It is Z-Biotics. Today's sponsor is back. It is Z-Biotics, the world's first genetically engineered probiotic that I've been using and talking about for the last year or so. With all the great feedback from viewers, it's become the first drink of the night for a better tomorrow. That statement is so true, especially at the beginning of each and every year. I do a lot of different barrel picks and I always bring my Z-Biotics along with me in my back pocket. So how does this stuff work so well? Z-Biotics was developed by some very smart scientists who knew the real problem is not dehydration. It's actually a byproduct of alcohol that is most responsible for rough mornings after drinking. Z-Biotics produces an enzyme like the one your liver uses to break down this byproduct. So as I said before, anytime I know I'm gonna go do a barrel pick, I'm gonna be sipping some cast strength bourbon right out of the barrel, uh, maybe three barrels, maybe four barrels, maybe five barrels. We're talking real science that works here. No random plant extracts, no off the shelf ingredients, and no sugar added. All you have to do is drink one of these about an hour before you start drinking and that's it. You should still drink water, stay hydrated as always, and get a good night's sleep if you can, but Z-Biotics will make it a lot easier to get out of bed or get off the couch anytime you know you're gonna have a few drinks that night before. All right, so I know you wanna give it a try, here's how. Go to zbiotics.com slash mash and drum or scan the QR code on the screen right now to get 15% off your first order when you use mash and drum at checkout. You can also sign up for a subscription using my code so you can stay prepared no matter the time or occasion. Zbiotics is also backed with a 100% money back guarantee, so if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. I mean, what do you have to lose? So remember to head to zbiotics.com slash mash and drum and use the code mash and drum at checkout for 15% off. Thank you Zbiotics for sponsoring the video and thanks to you for making the sponsors happen. Cheers. So we're gonna get a little nerdy here with some history. Generational distillation in the Pepper family began with Elijah Pepper. He actually had eight children, Presley, Oscar, Elizabeth, Samuel, Nancy, Amanda, William, and Matilda. Around 1790, the Pepper family, along with Sarah's brother, John O'Bannon, traveled to Kentucky, settling around the area known today as Versailles. So after settling down a bit, Elijah and John built a small distillery near a spring around the town's courthouse and began producing whiskey. In 1812, Elijah was able to open a new distillery on a piece of land near Glens Creek in Versailles. Now, Elijah ran the distillery operations until his death around the 1830s. In Elijah's will to his wife, he left most of the assets, including the distillery, but Sarah did not have any interest in it at all, so her son Oscar Pepper began to run the operation. Oscar Pepper is really the one credited with taking his father's business and growing it exponentially. Now, one of the greatest additions to the family business was the hiring of Dr. James Crow. That name should sound familiar since Dr. Crow is known for perfecting the sour mash technique and applying it to making bourbon, and there, the Old Crow brand was born. Now, that distillery ran under Oscar's control until his death in 1867. Now, the distillery was to be inherited by his son, James. However, at the time, James was just a miner, so he could not take ownership of the distillery quite yet. But once it was time for him to take the reins, he definitely did. Once he was all grown up in 1879, he partnered with George A. Starkweather and raised enough capital to acquire a new distillery called the Henry Clay Distillery DSPKY-5 that was located in Lexington, Kentucky. The distillery became known as the James E. Pepper Distillery. Now here, James began producing his own whiskey using his family's Mashville recipe. He branded his whiskey as Old Pepper and trademarked it in 1880. Now James E. Pepper himself became a larger than life bourbon industrialist and he became quite a showman when it came to promoting his own family brand. His namesake distillery in Lexington, Kentucky was at one point the largest whiskey distillery in the United States. He also loved horses and operated the finest stable in Kentucky. His thoroughbreds competed in the Kentucky Derby and in races across America and also throughout Europe. 
He also traveled in a private rail car named the Old Pepper, painted with images of his famed whiskey label on it, and he spent a considerable amount of time in Manhattan where he would travel to promote his brand. Now there he was known to socialize with other American captains of industry, including John D. Rockefeller, Theodore Roosevelt, C.V. Vanderbilt, Charles A. Pillsbury, Fred Papps, Charles L. Tiffany, and William Steinway. This guy was a baller. He was also instrumental in the implementation of the Bottled and Bond Act of 1897. Now, unfortunately, on a cold, icy day in New York on Christmas Eve in 1906 near the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, James slipped on ice while on a trip with his wife and died from complications from the fall. Now, after that, in 1934, alcohol giant Shenley Distillers Company purchased the James Pepper Distillery. But after World War II, whiskey popularity struggled, and by 1958, Shenley had shut the old Pepper Distillery down. So fast forward to 1987, and Shenley was acquired by United Distillers, and there was a brief effort by the new owners to resurrect the old Pepper brand, but it was unsuccessful. It wouldn't be until 2008 when the brand would be revitalized by Amir Pei, who was able to obtain the abandoned trademark and began sourcing whiskey to sell under the James E. Pepper brand, coming primarily from MGP and Bartstown Bourbon Company. Now, Amir spent nearly a decade restoring the distillery for operations, and on December 21st, 2017, distilling started back up on site at the James E. Pepper Distillery in Lexington, Kentucky, which is a distillery I personally have yet to visit. I can't wait to get down there at some point. So history lesson over, let's talk about this beautiful bottle. All right, so the James E. Pepper decanter barrel proof was released late last year in October, presented in a recreated vintage decanter originally bottled at the distillery in the 1940s. Now it is non-age stated, but the website states the average age of whiskeys here is five and a half years old. It's bottled at barrel proof at 105.4. The mash bill is undisclosed, but supposedly a blend of corn rye, malted barley, and malted rye with an MSRP of only 65 bucks. All right, let's try this one. First thing off the bat that I wanna really talk about is how not youthful this smells. This smells like a much older whiskey than an average age of five and a half years would indicate. There's a lot of rich fruit here, and I'm not talking like dark fruit. This is a little bit brighter fruit, kind of like your apricot, your... It's very vanilla forward. You get a lot of, you know, vanilla extract, vanilla ice cream. One of the notes that I did see on uh, on the website when I was doing my research was almonds, and I totally get almonds here. Uh, you know, dare I say marzipan. <laughs> but um, it, it does kind of take you to that place. Like, so you have like your vanilla extract, and if you've ever smelled like an almond extract or have you know, been somewhere where they have like almond cookies. It's kind of has like that nutty sweetness in it on, on, on top of all that vanilla. There's definitely some nice oak. Again, this does not smell like a five and a half year old bourbon should. So let's give it a try. Here we go. So obviously at 105.4 proof, it's a very, very low entry proof into the barrel. Cause I know some people will be like, well, if it's barrel proof, how come the barrel proof is so low? This is, they're probably going the barrel pretty low. So this probably lost a little bit of alcohol while it aged. Uh, alcohol maybe dropped a little bit. Now, I don't know what their entry proof is, but if you're coming out of the barrel at 105.4, your entry proof right before it even starts aging, it's gotta be pretty low. On the palate here, I think the baking spices really kick in where you start getting, again, I think that almond cookie note is there, but you get a lot of cinnamon, some nutmeg is here. But it's very subtle. As you get into this, you start sipping in, a, you know, a little bit. It really just turns to a very sweet, yet velvety and powerful experience. I think maybe "powerful" is the wrong word. I don't want to, even at 105.4 proof, I don't want to make it sound like it's going to hit you like a large Creek barrel proof. That's not the case here. This is definitely a little bit more subtle with an amazing finish here too. The spice on this, on the back end, is really what. I mean, I when I first tried this, I could not believe the flavors coming out of this for, you know, for this price in this beautiful bottle. But a lot of the rye spice that's in this is what you get on the back end. I mean, you can make the argument there's a little bit of like a, you know, kind of like that old age leather, you know, type note on the back end of this, which is crazy because at an average age of five and a half years, you wouldn't think you would get those notes, but there is some sneaky aged notes in this bourbon that's that really it's it's really impressive oh man that time that's it yeah i got that apricot note the almond note is there 
I think as this opens up, this could get even more fruit forward as we go along. But the cinnamon, the vanilla, again, that almond, all mixed together, that rye spice in the back end. For 65 bucks, this is a beautiful bourbon. I'm probably so far for 2024, this is, this is a big surprise, probably my surprise of the year. All right, final breakdown time. All right, final breakdown on the James E. Pepper Barrel Proof Decanter Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Uh, price, 65 bucks for this bourbon, which is, I think, incredible. I haven't seen these for resale at all, but if anybody out there has seen these marked up, let me know what they're marked up to, I'm just curious. Availability here, I'm not gonna say it's good, I'm gonna say it's average. James E. Pepper isn't quite available across the country yet, but I'll say it's average for this one. You go on their website, they have a good amount of states that they distribute to, so I'll say this one is average. Value for this one, for this for 65 bucks, this value is sky high. I would, yeah, there's nothing more to say. It's a, it's a high value. The most I pay for this, when you taste it, I don't think anybody would really believe that this is only a $65 bourbon. So um, if you told me this was 80 or $90, even closer to 100, I'd probably believe you. And I might buy it for that price, but 65 bucks, I think is an amazing price for what you're getting. Alternatives to this one. Um, so when you're thinking about bourbons with a low entry proof, you automatically go to Peerless, you go to Wilderness Trail, and even Michter's. I think anything from those three distilleries would probably get something close to this, really impressive at a younger age. So I would probably say those three off the top of my head. And last but not least, is this a skip? Is it a try before you buy or is it a buy and back it up? For 65 bucks, I think this is a buy and back it up. You get a beautiful bottle, you get a beautiful decanter, it's delicious bourbon. The flavors in here I think are stellar. For $65, this might be one of the top values so far that I've tasted in a long time. I mean, it's hard to find really good values nowadays. There's, you know, you, you have a handful, but this one is definitely up there. If you see this James E. Pepper decanter bottle out there, I highly recommend picking it up if you like that really sweet balance, just all the flavors you want in an outstanding bourbon. Plus, you get this pretty decanter to, uh, to save after. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the review for the James E. Pepper Decanter uh, Barrel Proof Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. And if you haven't yet, find me on Instagram. Let me know down in the comments if you've had this one yet, if you are as crazy about it as I am, or if you think I'm crazy. So <laughs> uh, with that said, like I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share with. Cheers, I'll see you next time right here on The Mash and Drum. Cheers, folks.